Hello and welcome back to our Tarkovsky retrospective. We've been wearing our way through uh, all of Andre Tarkovsky's films and uh, we're super pumped. We're still going strong. <laughs> and we're up to his fifth film, uh, Stalker. So yeah. um, tell, tell the people about Stalker, Rob. Well, I, I, I want to say at the start that <laughs> you, you originally called this um, these videos the Tarkovsky Challenge. Yeah, and I was like, it's not really a challenge. We're just watching like seven films from some guy, you know. So you changed it to the retrospective, which you know seemed seemed better. In retrospect, it has been a challenge. <laughs> In retrospect, the retrospective should have yeah, remained a challenge. It's been challenging. Um, <laughs> I, I I've gone through a bit of a journey. If if anyone watching has has watched our previous videos, hopefully hopefully you have. Um, you'll know that I've kind of started off with Ivy's Childhood, which was kind of the most uh, kind of standard film, I guess, you know, the most kind of conventional movie. Really liked that one. You kind of fell off on Andrew Rublev. I, I appreciated Andrew Rublev quite a lot. And then I've steadily gone down the road of like thinking, um, this is someone who's clearly very good, who I'm not getting for some reason. And I was sort of thinking to myself that the problem was somewhere within me, right? Mm -hmm. Stalker is the point where I've realized that the problem isn't within me. I just don't like Andrei Tarkovsky films. I just don't like them. I'm not like with all the other ones, Solaris, uh, Mirror, I've I've said, oh, I need to watch it again. Maybe I need to watch it in a cinema. Maybe I need to watch it uh with a lot more focus and, and whatever. No, no. After watching Stalker, I just don't like Andrei Tarkovsky films. That's so and I feel I feel like I'm able to come out and say that now. Like there's been it's been really liberating. I can I can finally, without apology, just say, look, this this is me. This is Rob. He just doesn't like Andrei Tarkovsky films. Stick that in your t-shirt. Yeah. So that's <laughs> that's where I am, Dennis. Fair play. <laughs> So <laughs> we'll go in more in depth on uh, how you reach that conclusion based on yeah. Stalker. Um, interestingly, I, I felt differently, but we have this, again, the same score on Letterboxd, uh, three out of five or six out of 10. Um, yeah. So yeah, Stalker, for anyone that doesn't know, um, it's like a post-apocalyptic sci-fi um, film uh, about uh, either a meteorite or something uh, hits an area in Russia um, or the Soviet Union rather. And then uh, becomes like a, a forbidden area called the zone that no one's allowed to go to, and it's heavily guarded, uh, etc. Um, but you've got these people called stalkers. It's I can see you chomping at the bit. To, yeah, to... I am. I am. <laughs> it's funny because 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 Jen, my wife, she asked me what it was about, and uh, and and I basically was saying what you just said. I was saying, you know, there's this there's this ex exclusion zone called uh, you know called the zone, and uh, there's mysterious stuff going on in there, and there's these guys called stalkers who have to take people past these like government guards and take them into this area, and there's all kinds of weird magical stuff going on in there, and it's like post-apocalypse shit and sci-fi, and you know he's got a daughter with telekinesis and all this shit, but boring. You know, <laughs> like I, like that's that's the amazing thing about it for me. Because if you just put that that stuff you just said, if you just say that's the film, you're going to be like, holy yeah. shit, man, I'm going to watch yeah. this. Yeah. Story, and maybe. that's kind of that's kind of what we thought before, I think, as well. You yeah, know, we said last time, like we know it's going to be a bit slow and whatnot, but you know, it's going to have more sci-fi trappings and be a bit more uh, conventional in that sense. Yeah. But yeah, no, what you said is basically true. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so you've got these guys called stalkers uh, who still go in and they're kind of act as tour guides uh, um, and take other people in. So that's what happens in the movie. They This uh, stalker takes him to a uh, gentleman who've got various reasons for wanting to go there and then they enter the zone and things happen. So and you've got... The, the, on, characters, uh, the characters he's taking in, I mean, he's the stalker. The other mm -hmm. characters he's taking are just known as the professor and the writer. And yeah. so I take them less as, and I feel like this is a trope across Tarkovsky's films, that the characters are less characters, they're less literally people, and more kind of conduits to express certain ideas. And, yeah. and like in, Archetypes. Yeah, and, and, and it's the same in, I mean, Andre Rublev's based on historical accounts and all the people are historical figures, but even so, like the three or four main characters in that represent very different ideas about art and about faith. Uh, and it's the same in his other films as well. The characters tend to, like in Solaris, the people on the space station, they all stand for like a different position yeah. on the kind of the, the theological, moral um, kind of um, uh, continuum. continuum. Yeah, just the, the just the issues that are involved in that particular film in Solaris, more about reality and the way we sort of construct that. In um, 
in Stalker, more about the idea of, um, well, the what's the thing with the going into the room is about the the kind of the the, the dreams that you have within the secret sort of the faith you need to have to yeah yeah the the stalker believes that faith is an essential component for uh, what he does and for other people going in there that the that this room that's going to give people their desires represents an, uh hope basically and uh he uses these three characters one of them a scientist one of them an artist i guess and, and the other one yeah. this this stalker in the middle to bounce around these ideas about what this all what this all means and they're kind of they're less characters and more more kind of ciphers to explore these ideas yeah conduits definitely yeah. um so yeah you kind of given your overall um thoughts on it um so i'll try with mine and then we can go into positives yeah. as usual um i liked it um i was kind of like really on board for the first half uh and then the second half i started to lose patience uh if i'm completely honest um and then by the end i really was disliking the ending um, which I'll go into more detail on why later. So it was a bit of a, a roller coaster, uh, as Ronan Keaton would say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you just got to ride it. Um, yeah. So yeah, overall, it kind of just flattened out. It's like a good like six out of ten for me. I liked it, appreciated a lot of things about it, but the second half and kind of the overall argument, like the the most the widespread agree, agreed like argument or theme of the film, mm -hmm. was very difficult for me to get on board with. But positives, Rob, got any positives? Yeah, I mean, I, I do. I, I like, I genuinely like the technical aspects of Tarkovsky's films. I think that uh, the, the the kind of the lush greens of the actual zone are really nice and, and the, the texture to everything's really great. There are these long takes throughout the movie, long kind of tracking shots across debris underneath water that look really, really beautiful and really kind of stand out. And the kind of images, like I've said with all these films, there are images in there that will stay with you. That field with all the, the broken down, rusted up tanks and all the grass growing over them. Um, it's definitely a huge influence on, did you see Annihilation? Because I, I, I was waiting I, to bring that up. Yeah, I obviously hadn't seen Stalker until just now, but I'd seen Annihilation. And watching it, I was like, it's basically the exact same story, right? The exact <laughs> same story. Um, and, uh, it, yeah, so images like that are really great. Um, again, he doesn't – I don't know if this goes into negatives. I, I, I don't think it's necessarily a value judgment on this. Again, he doesn't want to make a film all in the same, like, color palette. But like he's not not a single one of his films. Under uh, like Ivan's childhood's all black and white, right? But after that point, they're all like because um, even Andre Rublev has got color at the end, doesn't it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like they all yeah. they all go between color, black and white, and then like uh, different sort of um, very stylized looks. Like in this, it's a kind yeah. of uh, sepia. I don't know, like an amber, like a yeah, like a sepia look. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, but 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 it all looks it all looks gorgeous all that stuff there's there's that one um the kind of climactic scene where um they're all outside the room having that big discussion and you get that one very long take of them all just kind of sitting in the middle of the room yeah. and it starts to rain and, and all that that's beautiful like it looks great i'm just bored by what's actually going on but it looks great <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah no i'd echo that echo that sorry um you know all the the visual elements and the sound as well you know how mm. he often kind of blends this thing of like is it the soundtrack or is it a sound effect is it just a low humming in the background or is there actually a melody i hear there you know like i like that kind of blending yeah. of the two and the atmosphere that that brings um uh i actually also really like the setup you know like i've said this a couple yeah, of times yeah. with movies but very often he has really strong setups so mm -hmm. like you know we talked about the main idea of the story so you've got a lot of mystery there a lot of promise um and actually like in a tarkovsky first i think it's quite exciting once they kind of get going to um the zone because you've got guns you've got chases <laughs> you've got cars and police and things are happening i was yeah. like whoa whoa slow down man <laughs> um <laughs> Because the characters are not real characters, they're kind of like these kind of ciphers for ideas. They behave in just ways that are just completely un un unrealistic is probably the only way I can think to describe it. Yeah. So you've got this guy who's the writer, so you wouldn't think he's like some kind of action man. Um, but he's not phased by any of this. Like just not phased, just not phased at all. So they're like going past all these like soldiers shooting at them, and he's just ignoring everything the stalker says for like the first half of the movie. The stalker will be like, 
yeah, look, the room's over there, but we've got to go the long way because there's traps and there's all these things. And he's like, oh, whatever. And he just walks <laughs> off. Like, why do you even go with this guy then? You know? But, I, but I, it, you can't get mad at it because it's like, well, it's not supposed to be, like, realistic, right? This guy yeah, yeah, is yeah. supposed to be a guy, I don't think. He's supposed and, to represent an idea. Yeah, so, and I right. think that also, it pays off, doesn't it? That that whole concept yeah. of him, like, not really listening to the stalker kind of has a, a, a thematic reason behind mm -hmm. it. Um, but, yeah, and that was what I was going to say. There's, in general, there's quite a lot of tension in the first half, like, because he keeps saying, like, don't go that way. And there's that great scene when he walks towards the house, uh, which presumably is another way to get to the room. Um, and that moment was really, really tense for me. I thought it was really, really well done. But then, well, we'll go into negative stuff later. But the first half, a lot of good tension. And again, mm -hmm. like um, you talked about the visuals, but also just it has to be said the sets uh, and the locations that they yeah. they More found location. and they dressed and yeah. everything and the way they framed them was beautiful and amazing and interesting. We'll talk maybe negatives about sets and locations. Uh, I think yeah. in a minute when we it's, get a bit meta about it. But um, yeah, yeah, it's interesting because we, we when we watched Andre Rublev, we watched that um, that video that you put up a link to that was um, a lady who gave a lot of historical context to Tarkovsky. Ivan's childhood. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I can't remember the, the name of the lady who did the uh, that video. But anyway. Ooh, never can I. Yeah, there's a link on the Ivan's childhood video. <laughs> yeah. uh, basically, what she was saying was that um, he, he had a lot of problems with censors. So that leads you to the idea, well, why did they greenlight his movies in the first place? And she said that it was kind of, well the films that he pitched that he was doing were not necessarily the ones that they ended up seeing, or that there was a lot of differences between the kind of script phase and the actual movie. And I can definitely see that with Stalker. Like I can see why it would piss off the authorities yeah. because you've got this, like not even the authorities, like not even like the censorious sort of aspect, just the producers, just Moss film, you know, yeah. because they're like, looking at it and they go, okay, so you're adapting the novel roadside picnic and you're going to do this thing again, like that synopsis earlier, this dude, he leads people into the zone. There's guns, there's this, there's that. And then they see the final movie and they're like, why have we fallen for it again? <laughs> he did it again. Oh, he did it again. He gave you the money again. And he he's done promised it. this time would be different. <laughs> oh, I, knew, I knew it was going to go this way and I yeah. still gave him the money. Yeah, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Yeah, there, there is that that interesting aspect to it. <laughs> and we'll talk about that more, I guess, later as well, um, in terms of interpretations of the film. Um, but uh, other good things I liked, um, you know, just like the weird shit that you would expect from the setup. And um, Tarkovsky himself, he loves to put these like little magical moments of kind of surrealism in. Um, I really like the moment with the daughter. Um, I like the little mini sand dunes and the what happens with the owl. Um, and I like when they kind of lose the professor for a while, then he appears like all these little tricks and visual tricks and, and moments were really fun uh, and memorable. Um, and the other thing I quite liked was, I want to call it the fake ending. Um, so, I mean, at this point we're talking spoilers, uh, really. Um, you kind of know our general impressions of the film, mm -hmm. but I liked what I would call the fake ending, which is when they all their kind of um, emotional and philosophical arguments kind of come to a head just outside the room. Um, and they're kind of calling the stalker a fraud um, and an idiot um, and a charlatan. Um, and you've got the whole thing with the reveal of the bomb as well, which was really interesting, exciting, and kind of came left field for me. I don't know if you predicted it, but I didn't. Um, right. And all that stuff was really cool. I was like, yeah, great, cool, this is great. And then the film goes on for another 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> but that kind of fake ending or what I felt like would have been a really good, strong, emotional and argumental, argumental ending, I really liked. Um, anything else positive from you before we go into the, the negatives? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I can't. I, I can really only say, I could really only say it comes down for me. The two pillars of what's good about this film and about Tarkovsky are the technical aspect and the ideas. You know, there are some yeah. good ideas. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for me, that's oh, yeah, like, that was the yeah. other thing I was going to say is that although sometimes the this kind of philosophical pondering and arguments arguments uh got a bit a bit too I don't know lofty for me in this one, um, sometimes I did really enjoy them and did find them really interesting. Um, so that was another positive thing, like you say, it's kind of like about that concept of ideas more than uh where you take those ideas. So let's go into the negatives, Rob. Um, take us off with some negatives. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's not for for me. It more comes down to the fact that, and I came to this conclusion with Mirror as well. Was that, uh, and this is why I'm now putting my hands up saying I just don't like Tarkovsky. Is the fact that 
he's just got different interests and preoccupations to me. And those are mostly a very um, sincere religious faith that he's exploring all the time. Uh, he's he's very interested in, for example, the, the, tr the main thesis of Stalker seems to be that the world is a less good place without all the faith and religion in it. That seems yeah. to be one of the kind of strands of the movie that the yeah. stalker thinks that they're that, that that's why things have gone bad outside and that he saw the zone i guess as an, an area where there was still that faith and it's been destroyed for him now because of what happens at the end and they don't go in the room now he thinks well there's no faith no one believes in anything anymore and that's why the world's gone to crap and i can see why tarkovsky as someone growing up in the soviet union very religious person um would make a film about here's this place now where there's no faith because obviously yeah. the Soviet Union was, was quite active religion. Uh, and I can see why that's important to him. And they're obviously very important themes to him, um, but they're not important themes to me. I, I don't care. And I said with, um, I know with Andrei Rublev, you were saying you weren't so interested necessarily in the religious arguments and that. Mm -hmm. I was with that because they seem to be more on the kind of theoretical level between these different ideas about religion, kind of batting them backwards and forwards about what they mean in relation to art. And even though I'm not religious, I had a lot of time for that. But as the films have gone on, and maybe it's watching them all in a close proximity to each other, so it's kind of the same thing repeating. Yeah. Getting inspiring. But as the films have gone on, I've just found myself kind of maybe more in the position you're in with Andrew Rublev, where I'm like, you know what, I, I, I just don't... I'm all for the discussion, and sometimes in the film, the discussion is interesting, but I feel like the ultimate thesis of the films is one that's very, um, very religious. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's, this is why when you say like name bad points, it's like, I don't, is that a bad point? I don't know if it's a bad point. I'm just saying it for doesn't work for me. Yeah. Hmm? For you, it was. Yeah, for me. I just mean, I just mean like, you know, object like objectively, like <laughs> I don't think these are bad films because of this. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure what's wrong with Tarkovsky films? I can't really say to them, well, he's religious, and I don't like his outlook because he's religious. You know, I don't. I I could say that, but I just that's not. You know, I don't think that's a good criticism of the films. But I will say that doesn't work for me. You know, it, it it's not. Yeah. The, the the kind of in kind of treatise of this movie, the whole point of it just doesn't work for me i'm not interested in that i don't believe that i'm not into it and so i think that there's a huge disconnect between me and tarkovsky on that and uh it's the thing is is that with movies i i do need to feel a certain amount of emotional attachment to to the the characters a certain amount of it has to hit me in the heart i can't i'm not very good at watching movies in a purely uh, kind of cerebral way. There are lots of very mm. cerebral movies I like, but they tend to have aspects of them that, that hit me in a more sentimental or emotional place. Uh, and I don't, I've not found so far outside of Ivan's childhood that any Tarkovsky movie does that. I feel like mm. they're just very cerebral exercises and that, that ultimately those aren't the kinds of films I really enjoy um, I, because I'm a simpleton, I suppose. <laughs> but it's like, but I understand, I understand a lot of what's being discussed. I just, it doesn't connect with me. You know, yeah, it's not your um, mind. Yeah, it's like there are lots of people out there, and I know people out there who I respect who have this view who can watch Derek Jarman's Blue, for example. Mm -hmm. Right, you know Derek Jarman's Blue. Yeah, just, I've never seen it. Oh. You know, and this is my description of it as somebody who doesn't obviously into it, so it's very uh, value judgment kind of loaded. It's just a blue screen, right? <laughs> like it's just a blue screen with some music over the top, isn't it? Yeah. And and there are people obviously very intellectual who can explain in a very cerebral way um, why that's good. Uh, but for me, there's nothing for me to connect to in it, you know? Yeah. Uh, I feel the same with Tarkovsky. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say, Derek Jarman's not an artist and Derek Jarman makes crap films. Have you seen that blue? It's naff, isn't it? It's not, you know, I'm not going to say that, but it's clearly not something built to resonate with me. And I'm feeling yeah. the same with Tarkovsky. Yeah, um, I have to echo a lot of that, really, when it comes to um, Stalker specifically. Like, when I kind of... I wasn't fully conscious of it, but at a certain point, like I said, kind of like after what I thought was the ending and the movie keeps going, mm. I started to really get kind of like fed up and bored and annoyed and kind of like actively felt myself feeling against the movie. But I wasn't 100 percent sure why. And then I did my usual like, you know, post watching research. And it's like you said, the the vast majority of the um the consensus seems to be that it is about that. That it's basically society is worse without religion. 
and you watch the film and think back in it and you know rewatch certain clips and you go shit yeah totally and also Tarkovsky said as much in a couple of interviews as well there's there's backup for this from the from the horse's mouth so um the, the only other analysis or interpretation i've read or listened to about the film that seemed like another good alternative was that the um the normal world outside of the zone was like russia and then inside the zone was not russia like and obviously that kind of chimes up quite nicely with the fact that after stalker he left russia um never went back and his last two films um were not made in russia either so that's kind of an interesting way to look at it but still feels a bit weird kind of feels in the opposite like surely russia would be the closed off small space and then the rest of the world would be but you know what i mean well, i guess so, yeah. i guess you've got this authoritarian state not letting people access this place it's almost like yeah. trying to get the berlin war isn't it into west yeah Berlin? And they yeah, kind of so. go, they go into the zone, and in the zone they are free to they are free to dream. They are free to <laughs> dream. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that's a nice interpretation, but it really does seem like the main one and the biggest argument of the film, biggest theme, is that. And I completely agree. I really don't agree with that position, and I find it boring and not interesting to listen to that position, especially as how preachy that message is conveyed in the last 20 minutes. We like we were joking about uh, the wife character and her little sermon to the screen. Yeah, I said you um, become an episode of Alan Bennett's Talking Heads for some reason for like five yeah. minutes, which yeah. kind of comes out of the field. But that's another yeah. thing you could admire about Tarkovsky. It doesn't work for me here, but is the fact that he isn't really beholden to any particular consistent style or genre in these films. Like he will just go into a monologue directed to the camera in a film that's not had that up to this point. And like yeah. in, in Stalker, does that work for me? No, but I, I I appreciate his his gumption. It's it's a bold choice. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> certainly true. I gave no fucks about what anybody thought of the movie. You know. Yeah, it's interesting though because um, I agree with you. Like overall, Tarkovsky is clearly a very religious person. Um, but in some of his films, it feels more like a general spirituality, and in others, it feels very very specifically like Orthodox Christian um and so when it's more like specifically orthodox christian or he's making a really like you know hammer over the head point about religion i find it much more difficult to tolerate but when it's just more kind of like a an airy fairy kind of like not specific sense of spirituality and like there being something else you know quote unquote out there i really like that but when yeah. it gets really specific and like like the religion we need religion we need organized religion i'm, I'm sort of the reverse like i think what i was able to take andre rublev is because it's not it's not hiding anything from you in that respect. Like the religions out on the table, these are religious people. They are monks and priests and they're religious artists and they're talking about theology and religion. That's all, all the cards. They're fully out there. Yeah. Stalker is pretending to be uh, this kind of dystopian sci-fi futuristic post-apocalyptic uh, thing with guns and chases. But really it's about how we've, uh, we've all abandoned faith and, and yeah. that's, that's a more vague sort of, um, metaphorical version of it where it, it, yeah it's, it's interesting to a certain extent but it's the one where um it it's the it's the one that's slightly hard i'm not gonna say insidious necessarily i don't think there's anything wrong with it but but i can take my religion stuff when it all the cards are on the table a lot easier but i kind of can see that as just they're discussing religion over there that's fine yeah. i don't believe it but it's fine because it's a thing that exists and they're discussing how they feel about it over there. But Stalker is bringing it much more in, in a more... Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I think it was a lot, very much... Away. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It felt like a bit of a bait and switch. Like, I think in the second half, especially, or the last, like, quarter, <laughs> it is quite kind of cards on the table in that sense. Like, but it's by that point, you're in, you know? <laughs> like, you've just watched, like, two and a half hours of movie and now you're going to tell me that it was all about that especially it feels weird after you had that really good argument where the writer and the professor kind of like win the philosophical argument. I don't want to put it in such, you know, black and yeah. white terms, but they kind of show him up for what he is. And that was really interesting and exciting. And again, this isn't the most important thing, but for me, I kind of personally agreed with that argument. Um, and then they kind of just double back on it and the movie just goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, but I do have quite a few other negatives as well that I want to rush I, through I quickly. Say, I want to say one uh, that, again, I hesitate to say it's a negative, but, it, it, you know, I thought it was funny. The, the way that I've said with these other films, with Solaris, for example, that they're, they're, it's possible, I think, to have a 90-minute cut where you lose nothing and it's a much better <laughs> film. 
and um, there's no better version of that in my mind. The, 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 the quintessential version of that in Tarkovsky, the, the example of that, is when the telekinesis thing's revealed. Because in in any other movie, yeah, <laughs> you would have her like move the glass slightly. And then, and then just, cut to credits. Boom, credits. Yeah, like, yeah. Whoa, she's yeah, got ten yeah. Hours. Whereas Tarkovsky is like ten minutes of just like slowly moving multiple glasses across the table. <laughs> and like, I say that I have the exact same reaction. Like, by the way, I say this. I feel like a big dumb dummy because it's like obviously he's not going for boom. Whoa, yeah. you blow my mind. He's inception. He's, he's or something. Yeah, his films are slower. They are more ponderous. They are more thoughtful. And, and and he wants you, I guess, to watch the banality of this telekinesis and in, and 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 kind of think about it. And he's leaving you space to think about it and consider it. And you know that's all well and good. But just from the perspective of making an entertaining, impactful movie, I was really expecting glass moves. <laughs> Director Andre Tarkovsky. I, mean, I, don't, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want a tangent too much, but I would say I think that there is space for movies and these certainly exist where you can do both you can have mm. a very slow languid film that ends with a punch like that's not impossible yeah. you know those two modes of filmmaking can coexist in a balance and i completely agree like that moment was like come on mate <laughs> it's right there do it it's right there yeah but i guess yeah. i guess you know again like to give it its due i think the thing he's going for is is um not an excitement factor there right there's a there's a banality to it there's a boredom to it the girl who's doing it's clearly kind of bored while she's doing yeah. it she's like lying with her head on the table and everything so I, I do get that but the part of me that likes to have fun watching films did not enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I disagree Rob. I can't say I disagree <laughs> Something that um, I wanted to talk about in the last review, but I actually forgot, and it comes up again this time, is a small technical thing, but it just bugs me, um, is the aspect ratios. So um, Ivan's childhood is in the academy, like box ratio, you know, like not widescreen, basically. Um, and that kind of made sense, you know, older movie, like, OK, cool. And then for Andre Rublev, he goes to widescreen and it's glorious and amazing. And I think if I'm correct, um, he keeps it for Stalker, sorry, not Stalker, for um, Solaris. And that mm. also looks really beautiful and amazing. But then in Mirror, and then again in Stalker, he's gone back to the Academy ratio. And it's like, why are you doing this? I don't really understand. Like, you, they, they use it all the time in this way in movies, especially more modern movies. Like, okay, maybe it's a bit like um, an Alice, not an Alice in Wonderland, um, movie with Dorothy in the Red Shoes. Help me out. Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz, yes, thank you. Complete mind blank. So where, you know, like it's black and white, then it's colour inside the magical world. So, okay, fine. Uh, in the post-apocalyptic world, it's the Academy ratio. And then when you get inside the zone, it's widescreen. Didn't even do that. It's just in think, the Academy ratio. Why? I hate I, it. <laughs> I, my guess would be that, um, I mean, I think it's an artistic choice in terms of the, the way you compose images is different in widescreen as opposed mm. to in a square. And mm. I think... Um, there's probably something in this, but I'm not educated enough about it to, to talk about. But I, my guess would be in the direction of, and let us know in the comments if I'm going anywhere, if I'm getting warmer. But my guess would be that he's got that interest, for example, in Andrei Rublev of, of like religious icons and, and these particular sort of f forms of art, and they're really not widescreen. You know, <laughs> they're yeah. more, they're more kind of. I, I think he thinks in terms of squares. Yeah, that's well, interesting. I think he thinks in terms of it as like a painting, you know. Mm, mm. Uh, and, and I think he's composing the frame in that way. Like, I don't think the the sh the shot, for example, where the three men are sitting on the ground and you have got that long take would be would benefit from widescreen. I think it it's composed really nicely within the frame that it's in. I and think I it would work quite nicely because it has an internal frame already, which is the square that contains them. And then the rest of the background is basically black. And then the, with the rain and the water coming down, I think it would work really nicely. And many other the, of the shots, like when you're out in nature, would look so much nicer and have so much more detail and scope, like with widescreen. I don't know. Like, I'm just, I love widescreen and I love I his think, vistas and his I, nature. Yeah. I just love to see it just pushed out <laughs> it's possible as well because for the majority of of cinema up to that point widescreen didn't exist and mm. when widescreen came in and there were lots of different competing formats for it it was a bit of a gimmick in the same way that yeah. 3d 
a bit of a gimmick, and I can imagine the Mark yeah. Kermode and whatnot of the day. A lot of them probably said, well, "What's this? this? Is a gimmick? You don't need to see it in Cinerama vision. It's just go, go <laughs> smell a vision." So, so yeah. I can imagine someone who's as much of a kind of purist and as much as of a deep thinking sort of uh, religious uh, uh, kind of. Um, I, I don't know. I feel like I feel like being extremely religious in the way he is. Also, my mind makes him a kind of puritan in some way. <laughs> <laughs> in that, like, like the excesses of widescreen upset him. Like in my mind, he's sort of there going, like, I, you don't need all this gaudy, uh, gaudy widescreen nonsense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or <laughs> did in ten films to be made that way? No, I, I mean, both, <laughs> both your arguments are pretty solid. To be fair. Like both of those arguments wouldn't surprise me if that was the truth. I just personally, I, I've seen Tarkovsky in widescreen. I could see what he could do with that, and it's beautiful and great. And I wish that he would have kept with it. Still think that um, both um, Mirror and Stalker look amazing, but I just would have preferred that widescreen. Yeah, you know, I can't say that that bothers me. I think whatever aspect ratio of films in, I kind of forget as soon as it's starting, and and it's mm. just that frame that they've chosen to sort of compose the images within. Um, the the sepia thing um, bothered me again as well. I mean, I've mentioned this in several reviews now, but uh, I just I hate the sepia. I think it's gross. I think it's kind of makes sense in this movie because it only really goes sepia um, when we're in the kind of grosser world um, or the post apocalyptic kind of reality that people live in. Where at the end we see that in color, or is it supposed to be that they've all gone into the zone? Say again, sorry. At the end of the film, you see the the girl walking along. That's in. Oh four. yeah. So does that imply that they've gone to like live in the zone? It just seems to think so because they go yeah. home, don't they? They walk home, and that's in color, and then it's in. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe I don't know. They've gone to live there because that, that's the only place where faith can dream. <sighs> anyway, just a small <laughs> thing, but I hate the sepia. It's gross. It's weird. It's muddy. I don't like it. Um, anything else that's worth talking about? Um, well, just briefly, I want to say as well, you know, we had a bit of a an uptick in interesting, nuanced, or slightly more nuanced female representation in uh, Mirror. And we've gone now uh, all the way back around to the other way around this time. Wife and mother. Pardon? Back to just the role of wife and mother, which is- Yeah, cool. the nag, the nag, and then the protector and supporter for no reason. <laughs> the the 180 she does in this movie is incredible from the beginning to the end yeah. um yeah, yeah and then you know the daughter who's the daughter and that random woman that he picks up when he's drunk and then they just leave her on the side of the road <laughs> so not great in terms of that but i mean you know that's neither it's not too much neither here or there given tarkovsky's uh track record and, and the time and everything but yeah. yeah that's oh well there is one more kind of elephant in the room that we haven't talked about yet isn't there before we wrap up today I'd say I'd say just to just because kind of we're we're running kind of past the time you want it to go to that you should put a link to the video that talks a lot in detail about the production stuff. I can't remember the name of that channel now, but it was it was very good. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely going to pin and, a, a top comment for that. I mean the, the 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 brief version of that I think that's relevant to our discussion is that he ended up filming this movie for various reasons three times. There were three mm. completed cuts of this movie that for various reasons he. he just had to keep making it uh and because he was making it on on location in these like chemical factories and things in estonia yeah. um lots of people who worked on the film died of cancer like afterwards yeah. loads of people possibly died. himself as well yeah. him his wife one of the actors the guy who plays the writer and lots of other members of crew and stuff as well uh all became very ill after the filming and lots of them died of things that it's not proven but it seems likely that they all yeah. died things to do with making this film um and the fact that um this is one thing that makes me think badly of him as a man the fact that he put the crew through those conditions and the fact that he um even just just made the film three times because he's an idiot just really annoyed me because like and the really, I, i'm not using idiot lightly here like i i no, I'm I mean, a fucking idiot because yeah. like there's a bit in that video uh where it talks about is it um What's his last film called? The Swedish one. 
It's either the sacrifice or nostalgia. I can't remember which one is which. In the sacrifice, there's a shot where a barn burns down. The cinematographer said, look, we're burning down a barn. Let's film it with two cameras. And he was always like, no, we don't need two cameras, you know. And then they he films it and it didn't work. And he, yeah. did, he had to spend two weeks building the barn again, right? Yeah. And, and you have the same thing with Stalker where – Clearly, he's not watching dailies. I, I can imagine, again, in the same way, I imagine he's too religious for widescreen. I imagine he's like, you don't need dailies. What's all this? Did did Bresson watch dailies on the set of, you know, whatever? I'm not going to break the sanctity of uh, yeah, what was filmed. No, no, no. We, we're not going to watch it now because that will change the way that we're making yeah. it. See yeah. it all as a beautiful virgin like Mary. <laughs> and the, the, I don't know, right? I don't know what he's thinking of, but he was yeah. not watching them. So... Obviously, you get this point where they try and expose, the, you know, look at the film when it's all done, and it's uh, all blurry as shit, isn't it? The yeah. one that they did. Yeah. Like stuff. super green and blurry. And then, and then the second version of the film you made, he just didn't like it. He just edited <laughs> just it together and went, this doesn't have that magic. And then he tried to make it again. I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. Like, I'm yeah. really like... I know you should never really be on side of the studio or the censors or the government against the artist, but I really have, if I'm one of those like Politburo men or whatever in a room with Tarkovsky and he starts spouting off about his vision and whatever, I'm thinking this guy's a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> because he's, he's clearly, he's, he's clearly, um, like there's that quote. I, I sent you that quote. It's only I saw the Wikipedia page for Stalker, I think, where yeah. um, someone at the at the distributor was trying to talk to him about um, maybe making the film better for audiences to watch. <laughs> and his response, his response was something like, "I only care about the opinions of two people: Bresson and Bergman." <laughs> like, even if you're right, like even if you're right, and Don't even say if, it. Like, like, come on, like he just. Imagine how insufferable you'd think that guy yeah, is. Yeah. One of those people in that he probably movie. was. Yeah. Like you, you get that vibe from his movies. Oh. But yeah, no, like that's that was the last thing I wanted to speak about. Is that you know the elephant in the room of you know yeah. this film was made in incredibly irresponsible circumstances, mm. um, and just you know Tarkovsky seems like more of a dick than ever before. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and, and that does colour the film a little bit for me. It does uh, for me as well. And I think that's why I'm how happy to hold my hands up and be like, you know what, I don't like his films. Because the thing is, is before I thought, this guy's, but this guy's clearly a genius and I need to <laughs> try and get there and understand his films. And I'm like, no, this guy's an idiot. Like this guy's, I don't I don't mean like intellectually, like clearly he had a lot of ideas. He's a deep Yeah, player. yeah. But, but on some level. <laughs> yeah, in some way, like in a practical you know, sense or... Yeah. I don't know, and, in a sympathy sense for other people. I just, yeah, and I, I just, I think it's things like that as well just make me go, you know what, I don't need to try and like pander to try and find out what this guy wanted to say because, you know, he clearly doesn't care about anybody else. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't, I, that, he doesn't care if we enjoy or understand. If, if that wasn't clear enough from Mirror, I think yeah. that we know that for sure now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm looking forward to having watched his last two films. Well, that's so, what I was going to say. So let's look forward to our next movie, yeah. which is Nostalgia, Nostalgia, which is the one he made in Italy, which I know zero about. I know I've that. seen some pastoral images. That's it. That's all I got. I mean, so, you, could guess, you could guess. You could you could throw yeah. a dart at the Tarkovsky kind of recurring theme board and hit pastoral images, couldn't you? Yeah, that? yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there'll be like there'll be a horse rearer who's looking back on his failed marriages. Um, there'll be some very lovely lush green grass in it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even before it occurred to me how much the plot similarities were like Annihilation, the first thing that reminded me of Annihilation was. Um, the fact that in both cases, once they go into the kind of the zone, how it's all green and lush, because that's not what yeah. I was expecting at all. When you hear like the stalker is leading people into the zone, mm. a land that's been cordoned off, I thought it was going to be this like arid, rocky, horrible kind of radioactive wasteland, you know? Well, especially so, since the most famous yeah. image is that that like sand dune, the like mini yeah, sand yeah. dune image. Yeah, that's no, interesting. So, so the fact that both the areas in those films are these like really lush very green kind of uh, not like jungle but you know like overgrowth yeah uh, is interesting to me but uh but yeah we're gonna see we're gonna see that uh lush greenness i'm sure in in um, nostalgia yeah so uh tune in next time to see what we thought of that one hopefully a little bit more positive but you never know uh have you seen stalker you probably have let us know what you thought of it um what did you think about uh some of our interpretations of tarkovsky the man versus tarkovsky uh cinema 
um, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, if you really like Tarkovsky films, and I imagine if you really like Tarkovsky films, you probably feel like you have a quite deep kind of understanding of them and connection with them. Well done for getting through this video. Because I can imagine, because I can Boy imagine minutes, the two guys going, oh, yeah, yeah. Because I can imagine, like, if I was you, I would just hear these two kind of beardy dudes say they don't get it, like, five minutes in and be like, oh, whatever. <laughs> just I get it. it. I just disagree. For me, yeah. this was the first film where I was like, okay, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I don't I'm like being, it. I'm being flippant there. I'm, I, I yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you um, yeah. and see you soon.